What is up guys? It's Movie Buff Beth of the Movie Buff Paints and I'm back again with another video. Uh, today is going to be another movie review. Um, I know I'm not the world's greatest reviewer, but when a movie comes around that I really enjoy and want you guys to check out, I'll probably throw out a review for you guys. Or if there's ever a movie that you guys just want me to review, feel free to request it and I'll try to throw something together. Let me preface this video by saying that when we do reviews on our channel, um, and specifically when I do reviews on this channel, I kind of want to do more than just a movie review. Um, I feel like there's a lot of reviewers out there and I kind of want to give you guys another reason to come back to my videos or something interesting to keep you guys here longer. Um, uh, like with my King of Staten Island review, I went back and I ranked all of Judd Apatow's films and that was really fun for me. Um, so this one is going to be a, re a review of The Rental, which is probably why you clicked on this. Um, which is directed by one of my favorite actors, Dave Franco. And so at the end of this video, I'm also going to talk about some of my other uh, favorite films directed by actors. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and thanks again for tuning in. So today we're talking about The Rental from 2020. This is directed by Dave Franco and written by Dave Franco as well as Joe Swanberg. First off, I have to say I love Dave Franco. Anyone that knows me well or personally knows that he's like my number one celebrity crush. He's just very nice to look at. Yeah, <laughs> can't deny that. But also I just think he's uber talented and you know, being the younger celebrity brother can sometimes be a difficult situation to be in. You know, a lot of people refer to him as James Franco's brother, um, but I've always seen him for much more than that. I think that he's a great actor, very underrated, and I feel like he's starting to get more roles that kind of show that. Um, the Disaster Artist was great and it was fun seeing him and James work together. Um, but I was really excited when I heard that Dave was doing a horror thriller movie because obviously I love them um, and I love Dave. So I was all in with this film when it was announced. And then it's also co-written by Joe Swanberg, who um, he's kind of the king of mumblecore. You know, he makes a lot of movies where they're very lightly script. They just go in you know, it's just kind of like a crew of his friends. They get together and they, they make a movie, which I think is awesome. I actually really love a lot of Joe Swanberg's stuff. I like Drinking Buddies, uh, Digging for Fire, and then his Netflix series Easy was also great. So hearing these two kind of taking on something that they've never taken on before was really exciting to me. And of course, the uh, film stars Dave Franco's wife, Alison Brie, along with Dan Stevens, Jeremy Allen White, and unfortunately I can't remember the name of the uh, other character. Um, but yeah, just an overall great cast, a very small cast. So The Rental is about a group of four friends. Uh, there are two couples, but also um, two of the characters are work partners. Um, and it, it's an interesting dynamic because the two male stars are brothers, and then um, Dan Stevens and the other gal are work partners. Um, and the four of them decide to go on a weekend getaway um, and go to kind of an, a secluded beachfront home. And it's just this magnificent home, something that you would dream to stay in. Um, and from the very beginning, there's some tension among the four of them, um, you know, kind of just because of their unique relationship to each other. And then also there's uh, some racial tension with the owner of the rental just right off the bat. Um, so it kind of just dives right into the characters and getting to know them, and I really liked that. Um, but either way, they're they're going for a weekend getaway, and something's not totally right with where they're staying. And I don't want to delve into spoilers at all, so I'm not going to say too much more about the plot. However, I will say that I very much enjoyed this film. I may be a bit biased because I love Dave Franco so much, um, but overall, I feel like there's a lot to like about this movie. Um, first of all, I will say though, um, don't expect this to be like a big groundbreaking epic film. I mean, what you're going in for is what you're going to get. It's a horror thriller, um, you know, set on a secluded location. I mean, there's nothing groundbreaking about it. But that, that's not to say that it's not great. I think that everything, you know, every element was executed so well that it was all right, that it wasn't a, a super groundbreaking story or plot. And with that said, there were a lot of turns in the plot 
that I was not expecting. You know, he took this, this story that could have been very basic and took some turns, not necessarily twists, but just took some turns that are not something that you always see in this type of genre, which I really appreciated. I felt that the writing was really natural, um, you know, and, and part of that, of course, is the great performances. You know, all of the lines were delivered with ease and you really felt like these friends were actually a group of friends. You know, you felt like it was a real chemistry between them. And that's not to say that they all got along perfectly. You know, there were flaws and there was tension among the characters, you know, that added to the reality of it because we don't all get along, right? But yeah, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Sometimes in these movies, you don't dive into the characters too much, which I think is definitely a fault of the genre because in order for you to care about these characters or care what's going to happen to them, you need to know a little bit about them. You don't even necessarily need to like them, you just need to understand them on a little bit of a deeper level, which I feel like this film did a great job of. And you know, you want to be rooting for these characters. Again, that doesn't mean they have to be super likable, um, but you want to have, you know, some basis for why you're rooting for them in the end. And again, the cast is very small, um, but just super solid performances. And the score was so eerie. It was so fitting and, you know, very telling of how you should feel, you know, from scene to scene. And I like when scores just really drive the plot and really drive your emotion while you're watching the movie. And, you know, Sometimes it's more on a subconscious level that the music is kind of, you know, riling you up and making you a little bit more tense. And I think that it was really well done here. The cinematography was great. It was very well shot. A lot of beautiful scenery to look at. And again, the characters were great. It takes some turns that I wasn't expecting. And I don't want to go into spoiler territory at all. I, I just want to highly recommend this film. I just... I thought that this was a great flick and the third act was absolutely wild. I mean, by the time you get to the third act, you're not even prepared for everything that goes down and I, I really appreciated that. So for a directorial debut, this is just a fantastic film from Dave Franco and you know, from beginning to end I was invested. It's only about an hour and a half, so very easy to watch. Um, I would easily give this film a four and a half out of five. My one flaw with it, of course, is that, you know, it's not a groundbreaking plot but it was very interesting. I really enjoyed this film. It was just everything I wanted out of this type of film. So if you guys get the chance, definitely check this out. It's only about seven bucks to rent, well worth it. I hope it comes out on physical media soon for sure. And again, I'm gonna talk about 10 of my favorite actor-directed films. Um, you know, this isn't an all-inclusive list. There's obviously tons of films out there that are directed by actors that are fantastic, but I just included some of my personal favorites, some recent favorites, as well as some all-time favorites, and I want to hear what you guys think about this topic. What, what are some of your favorite films that are directed by actors? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dive into my favorite actor-directed films. The first one is The Town, directed by Ben Affleck. First off, I have to say I absolutely love heist films. It's one of my favorite um, crime genres to delve into. I know a lot of people go between this one and Heat. Uh, personally, I like this one more. However, I've watched this one a few more times than Heat, so I, I can't be totally fair. Um, but I will say that Ben Affleck is great behind the camera. I actually would say that he's a better director than he is actor. Um, he's not a bad actor by any means, but you know he really shines as a director. Um, I also really enjoy Argo and Gone Baby Gone, um, but this one's definitely my favorite from him. And if you're just looking for a great, um, suspenseful, tension-filled um, heist movie, I definitely recommend The Town. And it's got a stacked cast here. You got Ben Affleck, Rebecca Hall, John Hamm, Jeremy Renner, and Blake Lively. So yeah, The Town is a fantastic watch directed by Ben Affleck. The next one I'm going to talk about is Frailty. This one is actually directed by Bill Paxton. I think that Bill Paxton was an incredibly talented actor, um, but his turn in the director's chair was equally incredible. Uh, this is a horror film mixed with like family drama in just the best way possible and fantastic performances from him and Matthew McConaughey. Um, if you guys have never seen this one, I don't want to say too much about it. I'm just going to say you got to sit down and watch this one. It's a fantastic film. This next one I had to include for Andrew. Uh, this is one of his all-time favorite films and I enjoy it quite a lot as well. And that is That Thing You Do, directed by Tom Hanks. This is just an absolutely great 
feel-good film. And you guys probably know by now I love myself a good feel-good film to just sit down and watch and enjoy and can cheer you up no matter what your mood is. Um, and this is definitely one of them. And this is kind of what got uh, Charlize Theron on, on, on the map. You know, Tom Hanks found her and, and cast her in the role and kind of jump-started her career here. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, this is a great feel-good film. And if you guys have never seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. And, and who doesn't love Tom Hanks? And so seeing him in the director's chair was just a really enjoyable experience. I love this one. And again, this is one of Andrew's all-time favorite films. The next one is Don John, directed by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And he's another one that's just a fantastic actor. So I knew, you know, him going behind the camera would be a very enjoyable experience. And Joseph Gordon-Levitt, you know, he you can just tell that he loves film and he loves the process and he just loves art and appreciates it so much. So seeing him in the director's chair was just very easy. Um, and this was his directorial debut. You know, he plays the uh, title character, Don John, and he's addicted to pornography. And it's kind of him navigating his love life as well as his life in general and kind of working through that. And it's just a really well done dramedy type film and also some great performances from Scarlett Johansson and Julianne Moore as well. So definitely recommend this one. Next one up is actually Criterion and you guys know how much I love Criterion, especially right now during the sale, but we have Wildlife directed by Paul Dano, Paul Dano, not sure how to say it, um, but this one stars Carrie Mulligan and Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, Andrew and I actually saw this at Sundance and it was an incredible experience. Uh, this being a directorial debut just blows my mind. You can tell that, you know, he knows so much about film and he so appreciates, you know, film and it's similar to how Joseph Gordon-Levitt does. And this is such a beautifully shot, emotionally driven film. And I was just absolutely blown away that this was a debut. I, I, I just couldn't believe it. Um, and then he also wrote it with his girlfriend, Zoe Kazan, um, which I really liked to hear as well. He actually did a Q&A after our screening and it was, it was a great experience. And if you guys are looking for something to pick up during the Criterion sale, I definitely recommend this film. It came out in uh, 2018 and, and it features one of the best um, child performances I think I've ever seen in a movie. Um, definitely recommend this one as well. And I'm sure this is one that you guys have all seen by now, and that is A Quiet Place, directed by John Krasinski, who we all know and love as Jim from The Office. And he came out and shocked us and was like, here's one of the best horror thriller movies of the decade. And this movie blew me away when I saw it in theaters. I mean, just the quiet, tense moments, like people were scared to even chew on their popcorn. You know, and it was just such a fun experience at the theater. I cannot wait until we can eventually go back to the theater and see the sequel. Um, but yeah, this had amazing sound design, really cool creature design as well, and some great performances as well as some great child performances. Um, and if you guys haven't seen this yet, I, I honestly don't know what you're waiting for. This is a great film. Next up, another one that you guys have probably all seen by now, and that is A Star is Born. Um, directed by Bradley Cooper. This was the first adaptation of A Star is Born that I had ever seen. I saw it in theaters um, and I was very blown away by this film. Uh, such an emotionally impactful film. I didn't expect the ending, you know, having not seen any other adaptation of the film at the time, um, but I thought Lady Gaga was just fantastic in this movie. Like, I was shocked at how good she was. Yeah, just a really emotionally impactful film and has some fantastic music in it as well. So Bradley Cooper did a great job with this one. This one I believe I've mentioned a couple times on the channel before. This one was written and directed by one of my favorite actresses, Lake Bell, and that is In a World. Uh, I will always recommend this movie to people. Um, I remember I went and saw it at my local like art house indie theater with my sister and we both loved it. You know, it's, it's a really fun story actually. Um, Lake Bell's character is the daughter of a famous uh, voiceover worker who, you know, came up with the in-world trailer voice, um, but she also kind of wants to do that line of work. And it's a difficult line of work for a woman, and she kind of navigates that in her, you know, funny, quirky way. You know, Lake Bell, she, she's just fantastic as a writer and a director and a star, and you know, she's a great actress as well. And this is just another really good feel-good film that you can sit down and watch at any time and it will cheer you up and it will make you laugh and just a lot of really magnetic 
great performances in this film. So if you guys have never seen it, I highly recommend it. And then this movie is one of my favorite films of all time. I, I remember I watched it way, way too late in the game, you know, many years after it came out, but it, it really made a mark on me and left an impact on my life. And it's one that I can go back to at any time. And I can just remember how I felt when I watched it the first time. It's just a, a great film. And that is Garden State directed by Zach Braff. I think, you know, on the surface, this is just like a cute romantic comedy, but it's really so much more than that. You know, it's about navigating emotion and figuring out your own mental health and, and finding where you are in the world and how you could ever fit someone else in your world. And um, just such an important movie. I, I don't think this movie even gets enough credit. I know a lot of people love this film, but I just think that it's, it, it's just one of the best films I've ever seen, hands down. And the soundtrack is fantastic. So many good songs. Um, and we love Zach Braff and Natalie Portman, another one of my favorite actresses. And again, this is one I could put on at any time and watch it and enjoy it. I absolutely love this film. And then the last one I'm going to recommend to you guys, I've talked about it before, I will talk about it again. One of my favorite movies of last year, one of my favorite movies of all time, one of my favorite comedies of all time, and that is Booksmart, directed by Olivia Wilde. And needless to say, I cannot wait to see what Olivia Wilde does next. Uh, but I'll give my little spiel about this film. It's not the female super bad. I think it's there's so much more to it. You know, it's about um, the importance of friendship and, you know, the impact that that can have on your entire life. You know, the friendships that you have when you're young are, are so important to your whole life. And uh, it's laugh out loud hilarious. There are a few scenes where I, I just had like tears running down my face. I was laughing so much. Um, and just one of my favorite comedies of all time. And I cannot wait to see what Olivia Wilde directs next. And I also can't wait to see what Dave Franco directs next. Wow, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. Again, comment below with your thoughts on the rental. Um, and also comment below with some of your favorite films directed by actors. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to hear when we upload new videos. Comment with your thoughts. And we will see you next time.